So, first and foremost, I just want to say what, what's up to anybody that's watching and any people that's tuning in to listen to my recap of the Warriors versus Celtics NBA Finals so far, games one through three. Um, pretty much started game one, Warriors home. You know, the teams were pretty much even into the third quarter. And then, you know, the war the Warriors have their third quarter flurry, is what people call it, where they're pretty much amazing every third quarter. And then, like, they blew the lead, lose, losing the fourth quarter, 40-16, to 16, as soon as Steph sat down, because he sat down going into the third quarter, going into the fourth quarter. You know, the Warriors get lazy. They get, they get lazy on D. The Celtics fast breaks they just can't stop them you know bad offense with Steph going down to the bench bad transition transition D bad energy there was pretty much no energy as soon as Steph sat Clay struggles he struggled through game one and two we'll get to that later no GP2 he was supposed to play Steve Kerr didn't want to play him why did Steph get and and a question that people had after the game, why did Steph go quiet in the second half? Well, it was simply because of foul trouble. He got in foul trouble, had no time to get a rhythm. And by that time that Steph was getting into foul trouble, the Celtics were already finding themselves pretty much in the defensive side of things. And they were pretty much locked in for the most part. You know, people like to bring up the narrative of Steph not being able to finish and pretty much just him not being clutch, and it's just not true. You know, it's either as as somebody that's shorter in the league, full of big men, it's easier to just get a shot off and either make it or miss it, and that's you know that's pretty much the case with Damian Lillard. But you can't just look at Steph and say that he goes quiet in the fourth quarter because it's just not true. He averages the most in final points. He's uh, up there with Michael Jordan, and I believe it was Kareem, all averaging 10 per fourth quarter. So it's just not true. But, like, when you look at the narrative of why he might be going quiet in the fourth quarter, obviously, you know, first thing he needs to do to get himself going is get a rhythm or already be in one, not be in foul trouble. And, you know, the finals and the playoffs is where it's most physical and late in the game. When you're coming up for those loose balls, you're hustling on D, hustling on, hustling to get to the basket or whatever it may be is where it's most physical. And it's not easy for somebody to be 6'3", to, to be put on the, the standard of LeBron James, um, Michael Jordan, people who can finish during those times, late in the, the fourth, but at the same time, it's where you have to hold him up to that standard because Steph is one of the all-time greats, and it's understandable, but you have to also understand that it's not going to be as easy being 6'3", not as strong as everybody else down, down low, and obviously everybody knows going into this series that Warriors are completely Strength. They're, they're just not as big. It's not as athletic as Boston is. And everybody knew that coming in. So, but people were trying to come up with the narrative that Steph is just not clutch, and it's just not true at all. Like, I mean, look what he did in the, in the second and the third game. He he showed up in the big moments, though. In my opinion, I mean, the third game he was he got injured and he went out in the second quarter and they pulled the plug. But yeah, so that's that. Um, how much trouble were they in after dropping game one at home? Me personally, as a Warriors fan, it was a shock to me to see because they don't really lose at home. They haven't lost once at home in the playoffs. That was their first time, and and they looked pretty good throughout the game. I mean, teams were pretty much even. It's how I expected it to be. Like I had the Bucks going to the finals. If Chris Middleton was injured, they probably would have. Uh, 
but I knew that Boston would probably be our worst, the Warriors' worst matchup because of their defense. And, you know, Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, there's nobody that can really contain two stars with the Mavs series. You just got Luka, the Grizzlies series. I mean, you got Ja, but obviously Ja went down, but I still had that going in six, which it did go six, but I had it going in six whether Ja played or not. But with Ja, you know, just you're just pretty much guarding the ball dominant person on the court at that time. And with the Nuggets series, obviously everybody knew the Warriors were gonna win that. We don't even have to go into that, but with this series, you know, you got Jason Tatum, J- Jalen Brown, just doing what they do and getting other people involved in a way that we pretty much haven't seen them do throughout their careers. So you just see the growth of that and, and you see how much warrior how much trouble the Warriors were in trouble after game one. I'd say on a scale of hundred percent, probably about sixty if they probably about seventy percent on in trouble if they, they didn't win game two, which they did at home. So they split the series at home one on one and obviously they need to take one away from Boston to even the series up two to two because they just won because Boston just won game three. <laughs> so game two, the Celtics still get off to a good start with the Warriors motivated on offense and defense. Uh, Steph's finish to the first quarter gives them the lead. And when you talk about how much Steph has been doing in the finals, which has been amazing, like game one, he he had the amazing start, amazing start that pretty much carried that game for them. And then the third quarter, you know, that was pretty much everybody's quarter there. He had eleven in that quarter, I believe, eleven and nine. And the Warriors just completely ran off with that quarter. And uh, um, the second game, he played a great game. He actually pretty much like. He was the best player by far, obviously. You know, he's he's playing up to that caliber that people hold him at, where he needs to start games good and finish games good. He's been doing that and more. So when you talk about how much Steph has been doing, how much that might impact him, me personally, I don't see it being too much of a factor that's like having him tired or anything like that. But I definitely do see that other warriors need to step up so that's so that it's not all, all on Steph to carry the Warriors to their fourth championship in in eight or six years, I believe. Um but yeah, first half pretty much even. Clay struggled again. He struggled in game one, struggled in game two. Poole struggled in the first half. And he struggled in game one. Hesi- it was a lot of hesitation to play him early in the second half. People people easily noticed that. But he finally got in. Draymond found his game in game two. I was scoring Al Horford, who had 26 in game one, two points in game two. And Draymond had nine. So that's good. He definitely needs to outscore Al Horford pretty much every game if they're going to win this series, in my opinion. Because Draymond needs to be active on both sides of the court and if, if, if the Warriors are going to beat Boston. Um, Tatum, he woke up out of his sl- first game slump where he shot 4 for 19 a bit but he had the worst plus minus in his entire career. I believe it was the worst plus minus in the entire finals NBA history. Um, I mean, he was scoring his shots. There's shots that he takes. He he didn't shoot terribly. He he made some plays, but he had turnovers, and those turnovers cost a lot of points on the other side. The the Celtics had a lot more turnovers than the War, Warriors in Game Two, and that was their probably their biggest downfall. And it was definitely led by Jason Tatum. And probably Marcus Smart, if I had to go, if I had to think about the other person, but he didn't really have a great impact on that game. 
That's what I saw. Um, Warriors get it going after the ice cold clay because he had a he had a he had a bad first half too. After the bad first game one, he the Warriors get it going after Clay hits a three, and then they get a stop, and then Clay gets a running basket and it turns into a seven or one that eventually spikes a lark a sparks a lark a light into a fifteen. I mean, not a fifteen, uh, but a great third quarter by the Warriors. And Jordan Poole does what he does. Everybody know what he did in the end of the third. He hit a three made a play then hit the half court buzzer bitter which was pretty pretty much it and I was saying that too I was, as I was watching I, I thought the game was over after he hit that shot it was just a completely momentum turn and you know the Celtics they pretty much had I mean Jason, Jason Tatum he was already on the bench going into the fourth and after what just happened it only made sense to pull the plug on the road you already got your split you already got the one game that you needed, and now you're going back home one on one. So, I take that and be happy. I'll just pull the plug there too. Uh, not have the chance of anybody getting hurt because they were pretty much already banged up from the series before when they had to go seven games. They actually went seven games back to back, but yeah. <laughs> so Jordan Poole does what he does, putting the icing on the cake with the with the historic probably probably going to be historic half court shot at the third quarter buzzer <laughs> gp2 had an impact he didn't play in game one he played great defense in game two had i believe seven points it was hit a big three he got he he led stops brought energy defensively coming up with loose balls that's all that's what's important in the finals how much you want it you got to be able to come up with those type of things. And he did that for the Warriors in game two. <laughs> so the Celtics pulled the plug. Going into the fourth quarter, it was 64 to 87. Warriors way. Um, Warriors tied the series one on one. They didn't come out 2 0 going back to Boston, but they'll have a chance to split. I believe they can do it. They're gonna have to. They want to win this seven-game series because if they go down three to one at Boston, it's not gonna be good at all. So basically, so far in the series, it's, it's it it clearly can go any way. It's great offense against great defense. Uh, it's pretty much even, and that's literally what it was. It was one on one even. Both teams pretty much matched up even. Game three, Celtics get off to a perfect home debut with Jalen Brown's aggressive and impactful start to the first half of the game. Uh, Warriors on defense that had been elite throughout the playoffs, the entire playoffs, gets destroyed occasionally by the Celtics' small ball. It's something that I realized uh, throughout the second quarter of the game three. They, the, the zone, it didn't help them. Draymond's presence in the paint the whole game was not felt at all neither defensively and especially not offensively he had two points and when you're getting left alone like Draymond is you gotta score you can't be outscored by Al Horford by 10 plus points that's just not gonna get you a win you gotta score the ball doesn't matter how you do it you gotta at least give eight to nine points a night if you're gonna win the championship Draymond. That's how I feel personally. That's nothing but two threes and a bucket at the basket and just a free throw a game. That's all. And you're getting left over for every three so there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to hit threes or hit those in warm ups. It's my personal take on it. But the Warriors zone gets destroyed. Draymond's not having a great game. Curry's return for the from the bench and in, in the second quarter, and Draymond's sit eventually brings some energy on the floor for the Warriors, making it only a nine point deficit. Um, and then Dre comes back right before the end of the second quarter. He immediately gets a turnover. Celtics had the better first half, clearly. They had the better 
uh, home home debut, clearly. Clay's first efficient night of the finals kept the Warriors in the game for for the first half of the third quarter. And then Curry pulls up on the three, gets fouled, makes the shot. Four point play. They'll get the ball back because it was called a flagrant with Al Horford laying, landing in Steph Curry's landing area, which also also almost became a scary injury. They get the ball back because of that. Otto Porter hits a very insane three. And I, I want to commend Otto Porter because he always plays well. He grabs important boards, hits great shots, plays defense. Uh, obviously not the best two-way player, but he's very important for what the Warriors have been able to do so far and how they got here. Uh, so Curry and great and a great auto porter shot makes it a two-point game on one possession. And then Curry takes a three, takes the lead, and things just go down from there. The Celtics were unfazed by that third quarter flurry, which is good because it's something that they should be working on the entire finals. It's something they should definitely game plan for because the Warriors win every third quarter and it's looking like so far that's that's what's going to happen. It's nothing that the Celtics can do about it because they just have such great shooting and they got to get going at some point of the game. It's the finals and that's what they do. And the third quarter is always when it happens. And the third quarter is probably the worst time to make it happen for the other team because if if you're up as the other team, they're coming back. And that's kind of like kind of like um, an energy drainer because you see them coming back and you're coming out of the half thinking you're fresh with a new game plan, with adjustments, and it's just not working. But the Celtics did a great job in game three, keeping their composure. They didn't do a great job in game one or game two. Well, no, 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 no. They, they, get a, they did a great job in game one. I think they've been game planning for the Warriors. Well, at this point, you have to have some type of knowledge on your team, and, and everybody pretty much knows the Warriors are a third-quarter team. It's when, they, it's when they bring all of their energy for the most part. So they did a great job handling it in game one and game three. In game two, they didn't, which is why they lost. They were down 23 going into the fourth. Um, they had a 40-16 run, I mean fourth quarter in the game one, which which brought them back from their from the Warriors' third quarter flurry. But they couldn't repeat it in the game two. Game three, they did a better job managing it, but um, it, they did a better job managing it, and they stayed in the game better than they did in game two and game one. In game one, the fourth quarter they had was just his, probably historic, to be honest. 40 to 16, you never see something like that coming out of the Warriors because they're a good offensive and defensive team where you can't score or get a stop. You know there's just something wrong at that time. And the, and the main reason with that game, you know, Steve Kerr only went three in into the bench. He only went eight men deep. And you can't just, you just can't do that against a deep team like the Boston Celtics, they're all getting rest. They're all getting play time. They're all getting points. You got to match bench with bench in this series, in my opinion. So, um, Clay, yeah, so they, they hit the, um, so they pulled the plug. They pull they pull the plug and um the Warriors tie the series. Uh, so in game three, the Celtics get off to their great start. The Warriors have their great third quarter. But soon as they take the lead things go down here from hill from there tatum and 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 smart hits a three he's unfazed by the warriors run smart hits a three tatum makes plays uh 
He make he makes plays. That gives the Celtics a seven point lead. Clay hits a three, keeping them in the game once again with a sufficient shooting that night on, of game three. But the Warriors look they just look tired going into the fourth quarter. Clay was sitting because he played the entire fourth quarter. Warriors look exhausted. They look lazy getting out to tip threes. They look bad on help defense because they can't recover. They can't every time most times that they were helping they fouled a lot. Um they they, they sent them to the line just adding on to the Celtics points and them not being able to close out to threes. It didn't help that at all. It, it was basically almost game one all over again, just nowhere near as bad in the fourth quarter. 